Hello, everyone, and welcome to Positively Port St. Lucie. Happy New Year to everyone. It is our first show back in the new year. And today we have with us uh, Sarah Prohaska, our PIO. I'm Christina C.U. Perger, the Communications Director for the City. And we have a very, very special guest today, our councilwoman, newly elected, Jolene. And I'm going to try this with a heavy R, Caraballo. <laughs> <laughs> joining us today thank you and welcome and welcome. congratulations <laughs> big deal for yeah, you thank you for coming on thank you for having me Thanks. so talk to us you know you had the race I'm sure that was you know very stressful and and, and you know lots of anxiety and you won congratulations mm -hmm. and we're very excited to have you join us here today to talk about you know what drove you you know to to go into public service why why run for election why why for this council seat tell us well I moved to Port St. Lucie in 1991 when I was about 11 years old so I grew up in the city of Port St. Lucie and I started at a very young age unknowingly getting involved and it started off with some of my teachers and mentors who pushed me to do things within the political world and once I got into high school, I had the ability to serve as a, a city council member for government day. Mm -hmm. And I actually had the opportunity to, to do that. And I also was Nina Baranski's public relations um, intern okay. for her oh, office. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, so I did that mm -hmm. when I was in, in high school. And I did all that with preparation to become an attorney, because that's what I thought I wanted to be when I grew up one okay. day. Mm -hmm. And I ended up doing other things in business and getting involved mm -hmm. and then once I once I got involved in business and helping small business I, f I found a direct need within the community to be a representative for small business and be a voice for small business and it was during the recession is when um, the business I, I worked with for 10 years initially opened and that was a very difficult time for our community and the nation and listening to the concerns of our residents and owners and business owners out there I began to realize um, the different needs that the community might have and that's when I decided to see if I could help out in a in a different way and by getting involved politically well you know you've said a lot of things with mm -hmm. what you just kind of covered and I want to go back to your homegrown so mm -hmm. you actually mm -hmm. went to school here you experienced the community a lot of people move perhaps you know later in their life to Port St. Lucie or at a different point in their their life but you actually grew up here so you went through the school system you were able you were able to see the community grow you graduated from Port St. Lucie right yes. Port St. Lucie High right and if I recall correctly mm -hmm. was it your high school teacher that you actually had at the ceremony when you guys were that was the first time. So the, I was actually mm -hmm. elected for a short period of time. And during that time, um, Mr. Leonard, who is, who's now since passed, unfortunately, he didn't get oh. to come to my second one. Mm -hmm. He was my um, government affairs teacher and my, uh, yeah, he was my legal teacher too as well. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he's the one that pushed me in those initial stages to do a lot of the things that I did. And he was actually there for my swing for my first one. Mm -hmm. And that was really awesome. And he was very proud and also, sure. um, I, my other history teacher, who I think is the one that you're talking about that met, that you met Mrs. Sybil Cobb. Yeah. Mrs. Cobb, she was my history teacher as well and also helped develop me in, in government. But how amazing wow, that is, is that, yeah. too? So you could have someone at your swearing in for that, mm -hmm. A, that it's such a special occasion because it's, it, it's monumental for you, but also for, you know, connection in the community that, you know, you went through the school system, you're connected mm -hmm. to a teacher, they're able to come here, and now you're in a position to help make a difference to those that have helped you become who you are right. and, and, and giving back, you know, to the community. And it's all about servant leadership. So talk a little bit more about, you know, your passion for that and, and what drives you to, to serve the public? Well, for me, the public is the reason why you should be doing this. And, and, I, and I take that to heart. You know, if mm -hmm. you're not doing this to serve, then there really isn't a reason to be involved in politically mm -hmm. speaking. And so we had that conversation, I think, um, before we even started taping, you were asking me what were some of my goals. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to pick goals. It's one of the hardest questions to answer because my goals are really reflective in my heart of what the public is asking for. Sure. And that changes day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year. And it can change in a whim depending on the need that the public has. There can be one that's a higher need today than it is tomorrow. And so 
for me, my goals are broad mm -hmm. and they have a lot of, they have a lot of ability to be molded because business, obviously growing business and helping the job creation in their community is, mm -hmm. is key, but there's so many different details you can get into that. Of course. Yeah. So those, those tend to be broad for me, but at, at the same time, I, I believe that we have to be flexible to the public. And mm -hmm. the way to be flexible in the public is to be listeners more than we are speakers. Sure. And so I'm always willing to listen, and that's where my passion comes from, is to listen to what the public needs and what our citizens need and be ready to respond as needed. Sure. And, and also, mm -hmm. you had mentioned earlier, too, when we were talking off camera, is you're just one voice of, of five. Mm -hmm. And so I guess maybe a better way to ask that, too, is what's important to you knowing that, you know, these are the things that your public has shared with you, what's important to you, and, you know, what would you like to see maybe change in the city that would get maybe the consensus of everybody else as yeah. well, too? Well, family is really important to me. You know, I'm, I, I was raised here, mm -hmm. and I have, obviously, I have, two, I have two brothers and a sister okay. who were also raised here, mm -hmm. but I also have two children that I'm raising here as well. My husband and I, we've been married for 16 years. Uh, funny little tidbit is I actually met my husband at the Treasure Coast Mall when I was 13. <laughs> All right, see here. So, so funny. Yeah. The Treasure Coast Mall. Yeah, that's so, funny. And you've got a little one and you've got a t uh, an older. Um, yes, I have yeah. a 15 year old yep. and so, and I have a six year old. Yep. And so we grew up here mm -hmm. and, and family, and we've watched families grow here and we continue to see more families do come here mm -hmm. as well as um, our retirees that come here. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's to create an environment where you, they, like our slogan is work, live and play. Yeah. And, and how can I help foster that going forward? And that happens with the ability to have really good jobs and really good mm -hmm. opportunities. Safety is so yeah. important. We mm -hmm. have a very safe city. Very. And keeping us as a safe city is, is, is really crucially important for especially me. Especially the families, uh, especially the families with younger kids. That's a huge yeah. aspect. It, it ties to attracting everything to the mm -hmm. city as well, too. You know, when you have grown like we have to become the third largest in South Florida, you know, you've catapulted on the map. And so then how do you retain a lot of those qualities that that are associated usually with smaller, mm -hmm. you know, cities or, 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 or towns? And how do you keep that, keep that and still be large and to be able to compete and to be able to provide all of the things that are expected in a large city? Because there are certain expectations in order for you to retain business and to grow the community. Right. You have to sort of find that balance, which is really hard to do. How do you keep that happy balance of keeping the small town feel yet being such a large and thriving city? So, you know, there's a big challenge for council to address mm -hmm. that. Well, I think that um, Port St. Lucie is always going to be that small town feel, no matter how big we get. Mm -hmm. and, I, and it possibly, I mean, it could be because we are so large. I mean, we are the third largest um, city by landmass mm -hmm. in the entire state. So, but because we have always been a very high residential community, it is that it's a community and it's mm -hmm. a community of people. Mm -hmm. And so we're always going to have that, that small town feel where it's, it's basically, we all live here together and there's many of us that live here. And it's so funny. We've grown so much, um, in the last, you know, 10, 15 years. But I tell you, there's never a time I can't go to the grocery store that I don't run into someone that I know. Mm -hmm. Um, there's never a time that I, run into someone that I know and they're like, hey, do you know what happened to so-and-so and so-and-so and look at how the city has changed, but yet everybody still knows each other. It's amazing how you know one person and that one person knows the other 10 people that you don't know and then you learn people's names before mm -hmm. you even meet them. Yeah. It's still a very, very tight-knit community. Mm -hmm. and, it, and, and it's funny because I watch people move and I've seen friends of mine have moved in high school, I remember. They'll move away, they'll try another city, they'll go somewhere else, but they always come back to Port St. Lucie. And I think that's what they miss. They, they might have different opportunities or you know, maybe more um, activities and attractions at mm -hmm. other locations, but no matter what, home is home. Yeah. And this hometown feel is what people always come back to. That they're attracted to, and that's it a really big, is. big attraction. Mm -hmm. you know, it, but how do, you, how, do you, how do you package that? How do you market that? What's that mm -hmm. secret ingredient? You know, how do you sell that to? And it's hard unless you've actually experienced it. So that's part of our challenge too, is to let you know, the public out there know, you know, what are these key components that drive the success here, that bring people back and keep it that type of community. And it all ties back to a lot of the initiatives and mm -hmm. things that council is gonna be doing. It's very exciting because mm -hmm. there are three new members on council now. And, you know, the direction is yet to be set 
because there there's a big change now and to move forward and keeping all of those things that help make us great and then adding some new things to that and how do you make it even more attractive to businesses to families to communities because we're going to continue to grow right and we want to keep that secret ingredient which is that small town feel where you you're part of a community and that makes a difference because so often you get lost you know you're, you're living in this enormous you know gated community hundreds of people and you don't even know who your neighbor is right and people miss that you know connecting to mm -hmm. to each other locally like that well and i think crosstown is is a great project that's coming forward yeah. and once that bridge is done it's really going to help bring the city also back together yeah connected. merging that east to the west mm -hmm. corridor and right now <clears throat> anybody that travels in port st Lucie knows how difficult it is to get to let's say us one mm -hmm. to the east side of one so it's going to be it's going to it's going to definitely be something that is a very positive um, What's the feedback you've heard from your, your constituents about that project? Because I know we've had a flood of people saying, yay, finally. Have you been hearing the same thing? The short version? Yeah. <laughs> get the bridge built. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's what our residents want is mm -hmm. get the bridge built, do everything you can to keep the project from delaying any further. Mm -hmm. It's it's a 30 year, 30 plus year project that's been in the making. It's time to get it done. People are ready um, to get to the other side very quickly. And I don't yeah. blame them, especially with the the beauty of the Crosstown Quarter the way it is now mm -hmm. and the ability to get to St. Lucie West Saint, as quickly mm -hmm. as we do. They understand now from having experienced that. Using Crosstown, yeah. Right, that, what a benefit is going to be to have that bridge go over. Go the other so way. So they're ready, oh, more than ready. Yeah, I think right. that's, uh, that's the feel I've been getting to. Well, it's oh. very true. You know, I personally can say to it, like, I tried to go to the beach the other day. You got to go either up all the way up and across or all the way down and across mm -hmm. and there's no anywhere in between there and the beach is quite close we just mm -hmm. can't get to it well mm -hmm. and infrastructure is really important just because we are growing and there is there is discussion of what the city's going to look like 400,000 plus people in the future mm -hmm. and one thing that I can say is yes we do have a little traffic hiccups here and there you know every once in a while but for the most part we really do have you know our roads under control there's not huge I mean for people that live down south, they know you yeah. can be in traffic 30, 40 minutes at one light, you know, easily. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we don't really have a ton of those issues. We have a couple of areas that are that we have to improve on. But for the most part, traffic flows very well in the city. So we have to continue to look at infrastructure as we move forward to ensure that we have availability of roadways so our residents can get to where they need to quickly. Because that's what it's about. We want to get to where we need mm -hmm. to in a quick way, in a safe way. And anyone who's been to Miami or down there and driven in that traffic knows it's so much better. Yeah. <laughs> I always, anytime I'm down there, I look forward to coming home because I know I can travel around town and not get stuck in traffic for 45 minutes to right. get 10 minutes down the road so and as our population grows we're going to have to address that also address safety with sidewalks I think sidewalks is a big thing that we need to continue to discuss mm -hmm. um, for me I would love to see sidewalk improvements in very particular areas where I know that I see a lot of walking and pedestrian action mm -hmm. and so I'm going to do my best to make sure those projects are supported as well okay one thing we forgot to ask you we need to mention what district you represent I'm in District 4. And what area does that cover? That covers South Bend, East of US 1, Sandpiper, um, part of Floresta, even part of like the Bay Shore. Like it, it, it literally mm -hmm. is the, the eastern the, side of the city. Yeah, the heart almost. It is the heart of the yeah. city. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Civic Center is in the same district. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we have major, major, um, I mean, the original GDC mm -hmm. is in my district. Yeah. And so, um, it's it's an honor to serve that district, especially when I am a hometown person. And well, that too, and you have a lot of exciting things that are going to be yeah. happening in your district yeah. as well too. Yeah. You know, Crosstown being a, a yeah. really big <laughs> part of that. Crosstown is actually not that far from where I live personally, okay. so, so it's going to be it's going to be very close to home. Yeah, <laughs> hitting home in more ways than one. Yeah. for you. There you go. Well, we look forward to that project. What? Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We really do appreciate it, and we look forward to having you back very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and good luck with your first term. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. I appreciate we're it. Thank you so very much. Very excited to have you. Well, I'm very excited to um, serve, and I want to thank the residents of the city of Port St. Lucie for electing me to office. And I'm going to do all that I can the next four years, not only to be able to bring great things to the city with in partnership with the city council members, but also hopefully I'm going to make you proud too as well. Well, we know you will. Thank, thank you. you so much. And we'll be right back after these messages.
Welcome back to Positively Port St. Lucie. I'm Sarah Prohaska, Public Information Officer with the City of Port St. Lucie. I'm once again joined with Christina Seuperger, our Communications Director here at the City. And in this show, we're featuring our three new council members who were elected in November. They've been sworn into office. In previous segment, we had Councilwoman Caraballo. Right now, we're honored to have Councilman John Carvelli with us. Thank you so much for coming in. It's great Thank to you. be here with and you guys. And congratulations. We're very excited that you joined the team. Thank you very you much. you got elected. I know that was, you know, a, a long struggle, but yeah, we're very excited to have <laughs> you. <laughs> and you are no stranger um, to us here in Port St. Lucie. You've been around yeah. a, a long time. And um, can you just share some for, for our listeners some of your, your history here? Well, we, I moved here in 1973. My family moved here to open an Italian delicatessen in Fort Pierce, Florida. And we were one of the early residents of Port St. Lucie. We, uh, I think there were 5,500 people when we moved here in 1973. 1973, that's, <laughs> there that, wasn't you any. don't find many people that far back. So. I think yeah. one bus picked us up on uh, Prima Vista and made a U-turn at Floresta and went to White City and picked some of the folks up. I know Brad Keene in the... Uh, Records department. He rode the bus with me. He oh, used to sit with me wow. on the bus. I used I to save him a seat. I can't even imagine, you know, Port St. Lucie <laughs> no. being that small. There wasn't much here. I can yeah. tell you. You could ride my mini bike around all over town and never see any cars. Wow. Just go down Floresta from Prima Vista to Sam Piper Bay and see one car, two cars oh on my, my, on my wow. mini bike that That's I built. <laughs> <laughs> and it was safe to drive it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no traffic. That's how everybody remembered me. I was the kid that rode all over PSL in the mini bike that he built. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That is so... That, it was funny. That is funny. Oh. So you've then definitely seen Port St. Lucie grow. Tell us a little bit about your experience some and some of the, of the things, the growth, and, and what you've... Well, I remember back in... 80, 79, 80, mm -hmm. 81, we had a big growth spurt, and I think we were about 15,000 residents. And everybody started thinking, wow, we're really growing around here. <laughs> that was here. the growth spurt. So oh I'd like goodness. to be back there, actually. <laughs> it was quite enjoyable. And, you know, we used to go fishing at the marina on Prima Vista all mm -hmm. the time, and I uh, had crab traps all along the river seawall right there. Yeah. And I'd sell crabs in the morning in middle school to the oh. neighbors. Oh, <laughs> I, my goodness. I used to walk with buckets of crabs and knock on doors before school in middle school and sell crabs to the neighbors. Talk about a Florida childhood. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> fish for dinner. Yeah. Many nights, fish for dinner. My mm -hmm. mom say, go down and get some fish under the bridge by the old uh, marina on uh -huh. Prima Vista. Yeah. And I'd bring home snook and snapper and oh stuff all the time. And, Wow. And Made I, Italian uh, red cr uh, sauce with crabs in it. My mom wow. used to make that all the time. We had oh my crab sauce all the time. That's what we lived on. <laughs> well, you have such a rich history of, of, of being here, you know, growing your family here as well, yeah. too. And tell us why. Why did you choose to run for council, you know? Well, you know, I'd served on the school board for 16 mm -hmm. years, mm -hmm. and yeah. that was a great experience. And I was involved in some big initiatives when we lifted the desegregation order. I was actually the chairman of the school board in 1997. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I felt I made a real good impact. And, mm -hmm. you know, I left because I wanted someone else to step up and bring some new ideas mm -hmm. to the school district. Yeah. And I just noticed that when Ms. Berger left that, you know, Port St. Lucie seemed to be looking for some change as, as evidenced in many of the elections. And I, and I decided to run for office. We had a big uh, primary, six of us were running. Yes. You know, all had good ideas yeah. and all ran for different reasons. And all of us want to see the city be a, a, you know, a better place ultimately. So that's why I did it. I care about Port St. Lucie, mm -hmm. been here a long time. And I think that we have a good leadership team in place with the new council members and the mayor I noticed puts in lots and lots of hours here in this yes, city. Yes, he does. He <laughs> is always here, you know, night and day when you drive by, you see his truck mm -hmm. in the parking lot. But um, he puts a lot of time in, and he's trying to make the city a better place, mm -hmm. too. And, you know, I'm real humble to be elected. It's a big experience in your life. You know, if you get elected, it's, you know, I look back at my marriage, having my daughter. Those are, those are banner moments in your life. But mm -hmm. when people have faith in you enough to believe you could do a good job to represent them, that's pretty good. That's, that's a humbling experience, it I assure too, you. It is, too, and especially because you, you were one of six people challenging for the position. Yeah, so yeah. that really does say a lot about the community and yourself as well, too. So We worked very hard. Mm -hmm. And I had a big team of people. Sometimes that comes down to the end. That makes the big difference. And you know, yeah. at the end, we had about 20 people standing at the polls helping me out. Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's just like I said, it's very humbling. You know, you just, you know, these people step up to help you. They believe in you a lot. And, you know, they put a lot of, uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself because mm -hmm. then I want to do a very good job. Yeah. You know, that's how I am. Well, sure. And, and now with that pressure on, you know, tell us some, some of your goals, you know, the things that you would like to see well, council a, a accomplish. Okay. Well, first off, you know, the debt issue and the finance mm -hmm. issues coming up, mm -hmm. and that's been in the forefront. Yeah. 
You know, I've talked to the city manager many times about it, and he put together a nice uh, one-page diagram the other day showing how the debt is decreasing and how we're financially responsible. We have some very healthy reserves. We just got to make sure we use those reserves in a responsible manner and we don't get a little reckless with our expenditures. But I think that's what the community is looking for. And that's what businesses are looking for when they want to relocate mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. that you have a responsible, steady growth type of city council, city government, and a community ultimately. And then, you know, I'd like to see Port St. Lucie grow, but be grow responsibly. Yeah. And, you know, many of us moved here, and as they always say in South Florida, we want to be the last resident to move into the city. <laughs> yeah, and we don't exactly. want anyone else after us. You <laughs> yeah, want to preserve. You want it to stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you want to preserve what you moved here for, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I still drive around the town. It's still as beautiful as ever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, like, my wife and I were riding around the other day, and we noticed it's just really growing into a beautiful city. We're installing the sidewalks, yeah. the street lights. You know, those are those little extras that when you drive into other cities that you don't see. Mm -hmm. And over the long haul, they just keep building on that nice beauty of the city. And, and you know, keeping our green areas green, that's yeah. going to be a big challenge. You know, you don't want to give away the ground right. at the expense of growth mm -hmm. and development. And we want to make sure we keep natural buffers along the roadways and around the, you know, like the... Um, the, the areas like the river, you want it to yeah. stay beautiful yeah. in those areas with thick, wide buffers mm -hmm. so that when people come through there on boats, they say, wow, what a beautiful city yeah. this is. And, of course, that will increase the property values. I can tell you that. The nicer we keep the city mm -hmm. <laughs> looking exactly. and the more responsible sure. we grow it, you know, the, the and that, more the property values. That helps there. keep it. I know one thing people love about Port St. Lucie is it has a small town feel yep. still. But, you know, we are growing. We are 180,000 people. But those yeah. sort of things help us keep that small town feel. Well, well that too, and the, and the appearance of safety, because that's oh, one of yeah. the biggest things. It's not, you know, the police officers on the streets that you see patrolling that makes you feel safe. It's that curb appeal yes. of your neighborhood. And no matter where you drive in Port St. Lucie, you get that feeling. So yep. different that's neighborhoods have different identities. And I can attest to that, because I'm brand new to Port St. Lucie. So I've started to explore and look at different mm -hmm. areas. And I see that no matter where you go, you get that sense of safety, whether you're in tradition, mm -hmm. you know, which is, yeah. you know, got a little bit more of a, a modern urban feel, yeah. or if you go all the way to the east side, which has more of that established feel, very different types of communities, yeah. but you feel that same type of feeling across yeah. the city, no matter where you're at. And I think that's what is, you know, a big part of the charm for us is, is that we're safe. We keep our city beautiful. Yeah. And our council does a lot for that, and that, that takes a lot of effort, and mm -hmm. it encompasses everything from the budget to keeping Port St. Lucie beautiful to yeah. making sure our environment is safe, our river, yep. our utility department, all of the things that we're, we're you yeah. know, taking into consideration to keep that. That's a very good point. The key here is we don't want to miss markers as we grow. Yes. If we need to add policemen and police cars, we need to make make that happen. Mm -hmm. If we need to add utility folks to make sure we have good utility systems in place, we need yes. to keep growing in a nice steady manner and not in leaps and bounds and, and deep valleys where mm -hmm. we're crashing. Mm -hmm. We're just nice, steady, firm growth. And yeah. I think that's what appeals to a lot of folks. And you saw mm -hmm. at the one council meeting, the uh, credit union came here oh. and just wanted to talk to us mm -hmm. about opening a credit union on Gatlin. And that was interesting because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think they saw that we're, we're, we're appealing to uh, new businesses. Yeah. But we're not overdoing it here mm -hmm. and just putting big boxes up all over the city. And the next thing you know, we have traffic and congestion problems. Well, exactly. so that too. And it's important to keep all of Port St. Lucie in mind, not mm -hmm. just one particular yeah. area, for example. Because, again, like I said earlier, the feeling of wherever you go in the city, you have that regardless of the setup of that neighborhood. And so that's very important, too, is to take into consideration if we do something in one district, what does that mean for all the other districts as well, too? Yeah, I think, I think the... Uh, the Crosstown Parkway is going to be critical, yes. yeah. and that'll take the pressure off Prima Vista, St. Lucie West Boulevard, mm -hmm. all those areas, Port St. Lucie Boulevard, and that'll even out some of the traffic issues that we see during yeah. 5 o'clock and mm. 8 a.m. and 7.30 in the morning. Just getting over Port St. Lucie Boulevard at 5 o'clock is, <laughs> a, well, that too is not fun. <laughs> yes. Since you've been here for, for so long, you yeah. understand the traffic flow. Yeah. You've seen it. You've seen the traffic flow increase and grow, and so I'm sure you can tell us how great Crosstown is going to be. Right at one point. One traffic. One, Which, where was Prima that? Prima Vista and US-1 <laughs> um, was finally installed. And, was that uh, a big deal? It was a big <laughs> yeah. deal. And I'm trying to remember, there was uh, palm trees from, 
I'd say Prima Vista down to Jensen Beach Boulevard, mm -hmm. all down the middle of the median. We had oh. palm trees that were beautiful. Oh, my goodness. And um, then the Welcome Center right up there on US-1 in Port St. Lucie Boulevard. Uh -huh. We got a traffic light there. Okay. That would have been about the 80s, I think. Okay. You know, but there wasn't much And here. Port St. Lucie <laughs> Boulevard was, what, two lanes? Two lanes. With resident, pretty much oh, a yeah. residential road at that I point. I remember. Yeah. Now Crosstown's coming. Yeah. What a big change. Yeah. And I'm sure it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous bridge when oh, it's that's done. Gonna be nice. Can I ask you, I asked this to sure. Councilwoman Caraballo because I'm just kind of curious. When you were out campaigning, what was the feel of people asking about Crosstown? Do, is the main feel you get they want this? Oh, absolutely. They want it. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We felt this, you know, this has been a, like a 12-year project, I think, mm -hmm. and it got voted in a referendum that passed with about 89% yeah. mm -hmm. years ago, and a lot of folks had their hand in doing this. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you had other councilmen and mayors taking the lead on this and mm -hmm. getting the initial mm -hmm. road started. And, you know, I met with the city manager yesterday, and we're making a lot of progress on this mm -hmm. one, and we still have to get some permits in place in the next few months. And I think everything will fall in place, mm -hmm. but we should see that cross down parkway, you know, a lot of progress starting yeah. soon. Yeah. And I know they've worked on the road up, they're working on the road up to Floresta. So yeah. it'll be good. And they're going to do a good job of informing the residents of when there'll be closures and delays so that people can work yeah. around those. Yeah. You know? So Yes. And that's important for our residents. Yeah. So to sort of wrap up, tell us, you know, just one more thing about what you envision for the future of, of St. Lucie. Well, like I said, we have to grow responsibly mm -hmm. and, you know, be financially stable, improve our ratings so that when we do need to do projects, we can borrow money at a lesser rate. Mm -hmm. um, most importantly, we have to maintain the, the good culture and climate of a, of a city that mm -hmm. people want to live in, you know. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I've pushed hard about the schools, and I'm, we're going to try to work with our schools to make sure we improve the quality of schools. Yes. Yes. If, if that's, that's what a, attracts that's a big deal. families yeah. like yeah, yourselves. Exactly. And businesses, and very important, that businesses. want to relocate to... Yeah. To St. Lucie, education is a big deal for them because first ultimately mm -hmm. <laughs> they relocate their families. First yes. question. First question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What neighborhood are you moving to? What's my school? What's what my child my to go to? Yeah. And what schools are in my zone? Exactly. exactly. Mm -hmm. And you know, and what are their things to do and yeah. how yeah, to yes. enjoy? And I think we're doing yeah. a good job in terms of recreational activities. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. I've sure. been impressed. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you. Yeah, we sure. Having been here this long, I, I remember yeah, when there seen was it evolve, nothing to do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you really know what that's like, right? But you, you, you found stuff to do. You, you were clamming in the river. And I can you're tell you a really fishing. good one. Yeah, we, when we were growing up. Mm -hmm. We had somebody's uh, mother, a friend of mine, would mm -hmm. drop us off at Midway Road, and we would hike to Walton Road. Uh -huh. and back to Midway all day and we would ask the residents in the old That's houses far. if we could dig up in their backyard <laughs> and we'd find bottles and old wow, artifacts. Wow. A guy named Pat Jones and myself <laughs> oh my every weekend in middle school and junior all high and high school. Yeah. All before technology and everything else that now occupies our kids. <laughs> that's what she did. Oh, well, that's thank funny. you so much thank for joining us. Yeah. We really do appreciate your time. Yeah. Congratulations again, and we'll hope to have you back on Pleasure soon Pleasure being here Before with we wrap up, really quick, just so residents sure. know, um, can you tell us what um, district you represent in case they um, resident? District 2 represents Torino, St. Lucie West, and parts of tradition, I believe. Okay. In a little a little south of um, St. Lucie West Boulevard in that section there. It's a big block in the middle of the city. Okay. okay. All right. Well, well thank, thank you again. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Pleasure we'll be being right here. back after these messages. Welcome back to Positively Port St. Lucie. I'm Sarah Prohaska, Public Information Officer with the City of Port St. Lucie. Joining us again is Christina C.U. Perger, our Communications Director here. Hello. And we are uh, featuring our third newly elected Councilwoman, Stephanie Morgan. She, we are honored to have her as our guest today. Thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me. Well, welcome and congratulations. We are so proud to have you. I'm very excited to work with you. So am I. Look forward to thanks. it. It's a very exciting time for a lot of people in the city with our three new, uh, three new faces on the council. For sure. I know you got through the election season, right? That was that was that a trip. Was, <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, winning in the primary out of the three yeah. so I got over the 50 percent that I needed but also the three new council members mm -hmm. with the new city manager and new city attorney this is it's been an awesome beginning mm -hmm. so I think 2017 is going to be 
fabulous. It's going to be the year for council. Yeah. Very good start for the city of Port St. Lucie. It is. So talk to us a little bit about why you chose to run for council and uh, well i'm a little bit crazy <laughs> <laughs> no it's always been uh it's not always it's been a passion i worked on uh, campaigns in the past probably the past 20 years and working on campaigns and working closely with the candidates that Is i that what supported piqued your, your, your it interest? piqued my interest then there were times that they'd get some really crazy calls or whatever it was <laughs> or comments yeah. <laughs> and it was like oh i don't know if i really want to do that and i like, yeah, i can handle it yeah. so and it was just really to make a difference mm -hmm. um the biggest thing is listening to the citizens and that's what i wanted to do is to hear their concerns and uh, be their voice which is you know very important listening to what you know the public wants and right mm -hmm. here especially in port st lucie because my gosh we've grown so much in a very short period of time i'm very new to port st lucie so i can't attest to the history but i know sarah has been here for uh, a longer much longer period of time and i know you have grown up in port st lucie and it's been your home and you've yes. seen that change tell us a little bit about your experience you know sort of coming up and being a part of the community. It, uh, in 1962, my mom and I moved, uh, I was born in Hickory, North Carolina, and we moved to live with my grandparents here in Port St. Lucie. Now they live in the River Park section. Okay. On yeah. Naranja. Okay. okay. The, the original but GDC. The, no, actually it was a Mackle Brothers oh, wow. okay. home. Okay. So that was even pre GDC. Wow. You set so. the record for me, I think. <laughs> I really wow. do. So I have never met like, anyone who's been here this long. So, yeah, it's yeah. um Mackle Brothers and you know that there's the Elcam uh canal and oh, uh -huh. street. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's mm -hmm. Mackle spelt backwards. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, I didn't no, even know so that. <laughs> we were we lived there and back in the days of when the houses were built everything was concrete i mean the interior walls of course no air oh. you had to have heat <laughs> yeah so we had heat in terrazzo floors oh, wow. which were amazing was, yes <laughs> but uh, yeah growing up and orange trees in the back and a canal in the back and wow. and how much and, has it changed right oh my goodness i mean we had to either go to North Fort Pierce to grocery shop at the A and P, or down to Stewart to the Piggly Wiggly. Oh my goodness! To get and groceries. So you know it was wow. kind of like the same <laughs> distance to yeah, go. Yeah. So which way, north or it, south? It was like, uh, you know, what <laughs> do you do? And there was nothing out west. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you went to Sportsman's Park, and that was the end. Oh wow! There was nothing else. I don't oh even goodness. know where. Where is that? So like it's right off uh, Aroso and oh, Prima so it's Vista. like right here. So yeah. Aroso yeah. was as far west as it. Uh, it just went a little bit beyond, wow. and then also from Floresta south was just three streets: Celestia, Serenata, and Naranja. And no and Port Saint Lucie Boulevard at that no, point. Um, yeah, or was it just a know, rinky dink little? Road? I think it was just a. <sighs> Golly, no, thinking of really, how. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Do I know, know the spot? You know what's so wild? We used to ride our bike over to. There was a bridge that went over the turnpike, mm -hmm. and we used to ride our bike and go over the turnpike and watch all the cars go by. Wow. Well, there weren't a lot of them, but there are now. <laughs> yeah. But to me, to imagine riding my bike from there to the turnpike now, oh no, mm -mm, mm -hmm. that's yeah. too far. But <laughs> we used to ride our bikes everywhere. Mm. Yeah, because there was nowhere. There was no other way of getting around. That, that there was, was no traffic. Amazing. You could. It there was, was no traffic. <laughs> we used to ride down to the 7-Eleven, which was on US-1 in Prima Vista, mm -hmm. and get an icy and sit under the big banyan tree there. And then we'd go to the uh, marina and go oh. swimming. At the I, I can't even pool. imagine. I can't even imagine yeah. how Port St. Lucie was back then, because I see it now. And it's still got that you know hometown, yeah. small town well, it was feel. two lanes, US-1. But now and with the coming of crosstown you know oh, that's going to be that's going to be the piece that really yeah. puts port, port st lucie up on the map because i think it's going to be a beautiful project tell us yeah. a little bit about that and have you heard in in the community any feedback on crosstown um 
they they want to know when are they going to build the bridge yeah so i think so that's the now, consensus everybody. now everybody should know by now or if not yeah. it's being built yeah. <laughs> it's so <coming. laughs> it is started and uh just waiting for final mm -hmm. permits but uh the pre -con the work has started the work has yeah, started now the work utilities be mm -hmm. so it it's uh coming to it's free very fruition exciting. and it's and it's amazing and and for yeah. you especially because you've seen it you know in its very natural state you've seen port st lucie grow right. and develop and become you know what we are today and now this is going to just continue to add to to that charm and the benefit and the value to the community so it's got to be a very exciting you know some of the other things with the history and being here as long as i have for special occasions we would go down to the country club Sandpiper Bay oh, uh -huh. Country mm -hmm. Club. Uh -huh. okay. It was, I think, it was the Port St. Lucie Country Club, and never heard of Club Med. Mm -hmm. But we would go down there on special occasions and have dinner. That was your fancy. That was that our was the fancy, fancy. It, like yeah. on Thanksgiving, <laughs> and I think I even have pictures of ice sculptures that they used to do wow. back in the day. Wow. But another thing was is that living with my grandparents, which I was so blessed, wonderful people, mm -hmm. and most uh, most of my cousins all lived in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Every summer, a different group of them would come down and stay for two weeks, and of course, we always had to go to the Shell Bazaar. Oh which my still gosh! Still stands today. Yeah, still, still stands right? today. Yeah. And get our picture taken in the big shell. That is amazing. That and it's it, and to know that it's still there, and then meeting mm -hmm. Christine there, it, you know, her parents had it back mm -hmm. then, mm -hmm. and it's it's wow. Yeah, I think yeah, that like is the, the centerpiece. Longest, yeah, it is. It was. It was. The I place. mean, it's the landmark. People know mm -hmm. the Shell Bazaar, the Shell US One. You're in Port St. Lucie. That's yeah. it. So I'll have to bring in pictures of that yeah, we, for. That's amazing. You should go get one now before, you know, uh, yeah. throughout the years. I will. <laughs> and we can put one before and after up as well. Yeah, oh, I did. My good. cousin came down, I think it was last year, and we had to go to the shell. Oh, she goes, yeah. we've got to go see the shell and get our picture taken. And we did. What it's a tradition. That's a special, <laughs> yeah, what a special tradition you could have. Every year. Yeah. Every time they come down now, we have to go to the shell. That's awesome. <laughs> so then now, switching gears just a little bit, tell me about some of your goals for, for council now that, that you're on the council. What is it that you would like to see happen in, in Port St. Lucie? I think the number one priority, and especially when I was campaigning and running for office and listening to the citizens, is uh, the budget, the millage rate, our debt. Uh, it is such a major concern with everybody wanting to get rid of this debt and we all know some of the you know, areas that we have to take care mm -hmm. of it's going to be a slow process it's not going to happen overnight but we're working on it and that's one of my goals is to start that and mm -hmm. get that to at least show the citizens that we're working on it they have to see that something's being done another thing is i'm out in the community as much as i can i'm very approachable call me here call me you know email me uh i will be starting this month a haven't named it yet so i'm looking okay, for suggestions yeah, okay. yeah like mm -hmm. meet and eat with morgan or <laughs> <laughs> where morgan is we all meet and, yeah or, but i'm going to be in district one go to a restaurant different restaurant every month uh, and hopefully people will come out and enjoy a meal whether it be breakfast lunch or dinner and the times will be displayed and come out and meet me and talk about any concerns that you have and to listen to updates because I want to give updates at those meetings also. That's a great way to also um, showcase some of our businesses, our local restaurants. Yes. Who maybe you hadn't tried it yet. Exactly. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to that because yeah. there's a lot of yeah. restaurants in District yeah. 1. There you <laughs> go. It gives a reason for the community to come out, try the local business if they haven't already done exactly. so. And, but more importantly, talk with you, voice their concerns, or share good things, too, that they're pleased with. Because, you know, a lot of the times people think it's only just because I want to go and tell you all of the things that I see wrong or bad, but 
there's a lot of things that people share that are good there, as well too. There's so many positive things about Port St. Lucie. That's why I love the mm -hmm. name of the show, exactly. Positively Port mm -hmm. St. Lucie. There's so many positive things mm -hmm. and we have to get away from the negative. Exactly. And if it's a negative, let's turn it into a positive. Right, find and out why is it a negative yeah. and what can we do to make it better, change it, because again, that's what we're all about is, it is. is making it better. And also with my tagline that I ran on and I still to this day say is together we can achieve more. Right. Yes, absolutely. And more with Morgan. More with Morgan. That's yeah. right. Cool. Well, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks. We really do appreciate it, but just remind our listeners our, and our viewers what your district encompasses so that they know, um, you if know, they sort of, in, yeah. if they live in your district. Well, one thing I always want to tell people is that I not only represent District 1, mm -hmm. but I represent all of the citizens and residents of Port St. Lucie, because it is a, gen you know, mm -hmm. citywide mm -hmm. election. Mm -hmm. So no matter where you are, I'm always available to talk. District 1 encompasses from Midway Road to Port St. Lucie Boulevard, from Floresta to the Turnpike. And then from Crosstown, there's a little bit of a hopover that goes over Crosstown from Bayshore mm -hmm. to Del Rio, down to where the boulevard is, and just that back area. Um, I, I could mention Shindigs <laughs> is in my yeah. district. Uh -huh. So, the, and that plaza there with uh -huh. uh, the wings. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Who doesn't love tailgaters? Uh, it, the so the that nutrition store. the nutrition yeah. store mm -hmm. is there. So that plaza there is in my district. So, but just as a reminder, you know, represent everybody. So if there's any concerns. Everyone you know, can reach out to that's you. That's right. Well, thank you. And also the positive things. I want to hear about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We all do. Yes. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us oh, today. Oh, thanks, thanks for so having much. me. I enjoyed it. I thanks. love hearing from about your old stories about <laughs> how it you. used to be here. But what a great yeah. future we have. 2017 is turning out to be... A great oh, year with Crosstown what, and our every all our new faces around here. Yeah. Well, and just the new news that came out about the restaurant going in oh. tradition, Hopcat. Oh, oh, people are Very so excited. excited. I yes. am Can't so wait. ready for that one too. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. going to be a great year for Port St. Lucie. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, and we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Positively Port St. Lucie. I'm Sarah Prohaska, Public Information Officer for the City of Port St. Lucie. I'm again joined with by Christina, or with Christina <laughs> C. Berger, our Communications Director. Hello. And um, now we have a very special guest. We have Al Alyssa mm -hmm. Figger. Our, the city has a brand new volunteer pro coordinator and Alyssa has taken over the job. And she's here to tell us a little bit about how um, residents can volunteer their time with the city and how that what they can do and how that that could help them and the city thank yes. you Melissa <laughs> thank you for having me um, so we have our website and mm -hmm. we have our volunteer links and stuff like that um, people are able to apply online okay. um, they would go to our job postings and click on the external um, postings and they're able to apply there we also have paper applications for people who do not have access to the internet um, as you may know, they have the kiosks at City Hall and the Community Center where yeah. you can also apply. Okay. Um, and the process is pretty quick. It's not too bad. We do a, a background, some fingerprints if you're working with the children or elderly. Okay. And um, we do a quick little interview and fill out a bunch of paperwork and then we get started. Okay. So that's the, and it's www.cityofpsl.com. Mm -hmm. That can all be found on there. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's the, uh, that's how, how you can get started. But can sure, we? Sure. Or you can actually just, you know, come into City Hall and we make it very easy for you. Yes, we do have to do paperwork because, <laughs> you know, we're government and we mm -hmm. do do background checks and it's actually for everyone's protection as well too of because course. most of our volunteers do either, you know, Deal with the youth, uh, yeah, the youth mm -hmm. or, you know, sensitive materials or things mm -hmm. like that. We want to make sure that even our volunteers have gone through that background check. But it's a very exciting program. So I know you're new to it. Mm -hmm. uh, you recently uh, joined that position and you come from Parks and Rec. So tell us a I little do. bit about why you decided to make the switch and become the new volunteer coordinator for the city. So I've worked in Parks and Rec for a little over three years. 
um, this position was part of Parks and Rec, so mm -hmm. I saw, saw a little bit of, you know, what it entailed in the process and getting people on board and what the volunteers actually mm -hmm. did to help us, and I thought it was awesome and I wanted to be a part of it. Um, the program has been going on for some time. It was started over at the Civic Center. Um, Maureen and Patty Roberts had created it. Mm -hmm. um, and I felt like it was a great opportunity for me to move on up and um, help the program grow. Yep. Take and it up, to it, so take we, it up a notch. Exactly. Yeah. So we've got you know this established program. And now what we're looking to do is to really reach out to our listeners and to those who are watching us as well on PSL TV 20 um, to let them know that there is the volunteering opportunity many opportunities. In, in the city. And, you know, there's that misconception that you come in and maybe you're filing or you're making copies and that we just, you know, have volunteers do clerical work. But we want to make sure that everyone, including, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. the community understands that it's not just that. There's no. so much that they can get involved in. We, Tell have, us. we have greeters over at the Civic Center who greet people that work and answer the phones. I mean, there is people behind scenes that help with a lot of the filing mm -hmm. and scanning and things like that. But we have our junior basketball program where we have many coaches mm -hmm. and scorekeepers mm -hmm. and it's ages 16 i think the oldest one was 88. so perfect so tell us again how how if someone is interested what do they need to do so if i wanted to volunteer tell tell me what would i need to do again okay um first you'd go to www.cityfpsl.com mm -hmm. um, you can click on our volunteer tab on the left hand side um, it explains the program and has where a link where you can go and apply with the application um, it's via Neo NeoGov, so even if they just click on jobs and the external posting, it's listed there as well with all the other city mm -hmm. positions. Um, or they can come stop by, see me. We can do a quick little introduction, and we can um, fill out the paperwork there and start from yeah. there. They can stop yeah. by City Hall, just yeah. come and ask. It's a great opportunity to, to yeah. l really learn what is your city doing. And then and I think I take pleasure in seeing volunteers that do work for the city because they become our cheerleaders. They help us spread that good word as well, too, because I know from all of the people that have graduated from City University, once they've gone through the program, they really see, wow, yeah. you know, this is what our city does. And they become our voices, you know, and so volunteers are a big part of that. And I know they provide a tremendous amount of service to they the do. city. Mm -hmm. The number of volunteers that we have and the considerable savings, you know, across the board, it's, it's just a great benefit to us. Right. We have so many volunteers out at our Saints golf course. Um, the guys out there love them because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure and because they they're such a them. big help. Yeah. Exactly. And our botanical I mean, gardens have right. you know, mm -hmm. all kinds of volunteers. So again, mm -hmm. it's it's a great opportunity for someone who's looking, you know, to get involved. Yeah. And it's right. for any age. Any, any age. age mm -hmm. Any age at all. Very important to mm -hmm. know. We're a city of all ages. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, and I actually I wanted to mention another way we're gonna spotlight some of our volunteers just so um, residents can get an understanding of what volunteers actually do is mm -hmm. we're going to start doing um, a monthly video mm -hmm. on um, the city's Facebook page and the city's um, website and so it's just a great way to give people an idea they might have thought oh my gosh I never thought I could yeah. do that right oh, let me that's and a, a lot of idea. people move to this area and they don't know anyone and want to mm -hmm. they don't live in an elderly yes. community and they want to interact with other people mm -hmm. and it's understand what the city meet. has to offer and sure. it's a great way to meet people so and give back Exactly. So if you're not quite sure, you're almost there and you're almost ready to volunteer, check out those videos and they'll help get you over that yeah. hump. <laughs> You'll see, we're all friendly, nice, and everyone is usually so happy for the help and so happy for, Very the, appreciative. Yeah. Yes. for Great the, the efforts that, you, that the volunteers make here. Mm -hmm. so. Well, thank you so much thank for joining you. Well, us Well, thank you today. for having me. Really appreciate it. We wish you lots of luck. Thank you. If there's anything we can do, and we'd love to have you back again to talk about the success and the accomplishments of the program as well. So thanks for joining thank us. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for joining us again, and we look to see you back next time.